What's up, turtle fans? So, I know I've not made any Ninja Turtle videos in a while, <laughs> mainly because um, uh, there really hasn't been any brand new Ninja Turtle stuff releasing in the stores lately. Uh, but Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has uh, finally arrived and, and just aired on Nickelodeon, I think, from last Friday night uh, when comic-con was going on when all the brand new trailers were re releasing online um but you can watch i believe the first four episodes of rise of the teenage mutant ninja turtles on the nickelodeon website so if you go to uh nick.com or is it nickelodeon.com or whatever you should be able to find the episodes easily on there and um i did watch them i did watch all four episodes indeed and uh the first thing i noticed about the first episode, that is, um, was how vibrant the colors look. There's, the colors look really bright. The animation definitely, <laughs> definitely, um, I want to say it's different than anything I have ever seen before from uh, Ninja Turtles, and it is. And it does kind of remind me of something that, that looks like it should be on Cartoon Network instead of uh, Nickelodeon. It, like, that's the vibe I got from it. I'm like, Man, they could have totally put this on Cartoon Network, but uh, no, they are still, um, you know, a Nickelodeon property, I guess. But um, I, I thought everything was like so sporadic and moving too fast, and that, that's one thing I liked about the uh, 2012 series. Is the 2012 series, in fact, yes, it was also made for kids, but I felt like it maintained a very good balance between the. Uh, between the pacing and the comedy in Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, everything's just moving way too fast. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, can't we just slow down a bit? Just just slow down. Whoa. And the jokes are just, whoa. They're just, uh, how can I put this lightly? <laughs> um, they are definitely um, targeting this show towards the kids, and they really mean that because they are just piling jokes upon jokes upon jokes, and it just does not stop but that's okay because i understand they're trying to bring in a brand new audience um for the you know brand new teenage mutant ninja turtles and that's fine um but the first episode i believe the title of it was called mystic mayhem and uh one part of the show that kind of it kind of got me triggered and it, it's the point in the show where they're in baron draxum hideout and they got rid of their classic weapons for the new weapons that you might have seen they had in some of the um, artwork or some of the um, the photos of the toys. They had their brand new weapons. When Raph points to this wall and he goes, hey guys, what about the glowy ones? And they just all drop their classic weapons and pretty much pick up their new ones and start using them. So uh, <laughs> that kind of hurt me a bit. I was like, oh man, this is going to take a while for me to get used to. But uh Whatever, it's a brand new show, so I just got to deal with it. Uh, what else can I say about the first episode, Mystic Mayhem? Now, it wasn't made clear um, with this episode and the other episodes after this if the mutants live amongst the humans, but they have some kind of mystic power that transform them like into like a, a human disguise. Um, I... I wasn't really quite paying attention to that that much, so I might have to go back and rewatch all four episodes to understand that a little bit better because a lot of humans were kept just magically turned into like these weird mutant characters, and it was kind of weird for me. Uh, John Cena's voice acting as Baron Draxum was decent, and I thought, all right, cool, this villain is going to be a serious villain like Shredder, and no, no, they just started with the jokes even with the villain i'm just like oh man nothing in the show is meant to be taken seriously at all so <laughs> i'm just gonna have to try and get used to this um like i said it, it's new it is it is new and coming from an old school fan and a fan of the 2012 series this is like so different for me so i'm just gonna have to keep you know keep watching the shows and hopefully I'll, I will get uh, used to these new, brand new Ninja Turtles. So uh, the other episodes after that, uh, 
I believe the second one was called Origami Tsunami, where these ninjas, I think they were ninjas, or whatever they were, they kept making, like, these uh, origami designs out of paper, and they would, like, throw them at the Ninja Turtles, and the origami papers would turn into, like, these origami foot ninjas, pretty much what they are. They are basically the brand new foot ninjas of the uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle show. And uh, I thought the pacing in that episode was a lot better than the first one. Also, uh, that's another thing, the time. The time of these episodes. Like, the first episode was pretty much your average time, or like around 20 to 22 minutes long. Um, episode th uh, 2, 3, and 4 was like 11 minutes long, so they were shorter. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if every episode is going to be around 11 minutes long, so that's... That's kind of weird, <laughs> um, but everything just kind of flows well, and, you know, you get your story told in each episode, which is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, Origami Tsunami, not much to say about that. The Ninja Turtles fight Origami Foot Ninjas, and when they, you know, kick them or punch them or hurt them with their weapons, the Origami Ninjas just, just turn in, they, they uh... Yeah, they pretty much turn into, like, shredded paper, pretty much. And I think they could make, like, origami ninjas out of everything. Because later on in the show, they take, like, this... I think it was, like, salami or pepperoni. I think it was, like, salami. And they made, like, a giant origami monster out of that. Uh, the episode after that was... Uh, I think it was called War and Pizza. Where April O'Neil is working at, like, this... It's, like, this pizza place that's similar to, like... Chuck E. Cheese, if you know or heard about Chuck E. Cheese, it's a, a fun place where kids can hang out and eat pizzas and uh, watch these giant robotic animals on stage play a, a mu musical instruments, pretty much. Um, so Don, yeah, Donatello is like working on like the, uh, the main attraction. Uh, I forgot the name of that robot. I, for I totally forgot the name of that robot, but basically it's the uh, animatronic that comes out and uh, sings and dance to the kids and it ends up going haywire and the Ninja Turtles have to fight it and I thought this episode was um, fine up to the point where the robot started to have like it, it seemed like the robot started to have like a, some kind of conscience like it was like almost alive like I would have preferred it if, if it was just like a typical robot that went haywire and had no conscience whatsoever but that was the only thing that was a little weird for me. Um, it was it was a it was a funny episode. I thought I, I got a few laughs out of that one. And that's another thing I wanted to uh, to talk about is the brand new April O'Neil and Splinter. Uh, April O'Neil, brand new com design, which I'm completely fine with, by the way. But uh, this version of April O'Neil is. Not like the other versions. <laughs> um, you know, she's not like the 2012 April where she, she was like a high school student. And then later on, or no, I guess she always had those powers, right? In the 2012 series. Well, uh, pretty much later on, she got to uh, practice with her powers a little bit more. And practice with Master Splinter and started fighting with the Ninja Turtles quite a bit. And of course, we had the classic April O'Neil, which was always a news reporter. This April O'Neil, I'm not sure uh, what she does other than fight with the Ninja Turtles. That's pretty much it. That's all I know about her is that she actually fights with the Ninja Turtles. Her personal life is not um, really explained in this new series, at least not yet. Um, so yeah, completely new April O'Neil. Uh, and as for Splinter, oh... It's going to take a while for me to get used to this brand new Splinter. He's like short and chubby and he likes to sit on the couch and watch TV while eating potato chips, I guess. Um, I mean, yeah, some Splinter-like qualities are still in there. I could see it, like even some episodes where he's like um, scolding the turtles and he's like, ah, one day you will be the master and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, he, he's still there. I could see it, but his design is kind of throwing me off so i hope i hope i get used to that um during the later episodes and i hope maybe at some point they bring in shredder 
maybe, hopefully. I'm not really, I'm not really digging this Baron Draxum guy. I'm like, okay, meh, yeah, he's fine for now. For now, he's fine because I understand this is supposed to be a completely new, completely different universe from any other Ninja Turtles we have ever gotten. <laughs> um, but uh, what was I going on about again? I was going about the uh, the uh, episode. So the uh, fourth episode, if I can remember the name of it, I think it was called Newsworthy, where the premise of it was with this... Um, it was like this little tiny worm guy, or mutant if you want to call him that, who was like a news reporter, and every time he tries reporting on the Ninja Turtles, like, something would always fall on him, and that would be like an ongoing gag throughout the... Uh, um, throughout that episode and then he just suddenly snapped and he wanted to fight the, nin the ninja turtles and he went to like i think it was like a pawn shop he got like this blue crystal he put it on his chest and he grew um a little bit bigger and a little bit buffer <laughs> and uh the ninja turtles are just looking at him like yeah we're not afraid of this guy <laughs> um I, I thought it was an am amusing episode and it just had like kind of like a, a cartoon network type of vibe to it i'm just watching this episode like man how come how come they couldn't put these on cartoon network it just seems like such a cartoon network type of thing but um yeah it's it's still with uh, nickelodeon um not that there's anything wrong with that that's completely fine so uh later on in this episode the ninja turtles have to fight this uh magician who is like a mutant hippo as silly as that sounds <laughs> But, um, it seems like the mutant hippo gets the upper hand of the turtles, and then the worm actually becomes sort of good and wants to help the turtles and actually does help them out in the battle, but the turtles are, like, all, like, under this, uh, hypnotic spell, so they don't know that the worm actually helped them, and so they thought they actually saved this, the day, and it was an amusing, a funny little episode, I thought. So, um, yeah, those are my thoughts for all four episodes of Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I saw, I thought the first episode, Mystic Mayhem, was crazy. It was just crazy. I was like, whoa, okay, everything's just moving too fast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just slow down with the jokes, please. Whoa. <laughs> um, the episode after that, Origami Tsunami, was fine. Um, no, 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 sorry. It was... Or was it Origami Tsunami? See, now I can't remember which episodes came first. Uh, and there was War and Pizza, which was fine, um, and then Newsworthy was funny. I thought that one was really funny. So, uh, I'm not sure if I'm completely converted into, like, a, a brand new fan of this series just yet. I will have to keep watching these episodes, and hopefully it will grow on me. Uh, as for the toys... Mm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be collecting them, but uh, I will be taking a look at them once they are released in the stores. Uh, they should be released soon, I think around October of this year, so pretty soon, guys. I mean, we're, we are in, what, heading towards the end of July, going into August, and then we have September, and then October, so... Okay, alright, we still got some time. So, around October, November, the, the brand new toys should be out, I think. And, um, I have no idea if my stores are going to stock them in time. Uh, right now, I've been currently collecting a lot of toys from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toy line because I've been uh, a longtime fan of the Jurassic Park movies. And, uh, I do like the Jurassic World movies that they've been putting out as a continuation of the uh, Jurassic Park films and these toys, these brand new toys, I've been having a blast collecting them. Uh, they're pr pretty much my favorite uh, toys to collect right as of now for 2018 and I will be collecting plenty more. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to upload my thoughts as a uh, longtime fan of the Ninja Turtles. I have given every Ninja, every version of the Ninja Turtles a chance, and I'm definitely giving this a chance, as I've just, um, you know, elaborated on a little while ago. Um, the only version of Ninja Turtles I did not like was the next mutation 
That was awful. I remember when that first came on TV when I was a kid, and I thought, oh wow, we're gonna get a live-action Ninja Turtle TV show, and it's, it's just gonna be like the classic movies, and it was horrible. <laughs> it was so, so horrible that I cannot even watch the rest of that series. And then what did we get after that? Was it the 2003 series? And um, uh, soon after that, there was uh, Turtles Fast Forward with, with the Turtles in the Future. Uh, there was the 2007 movie just called TMNT, which I did not really like the designs of those turtles, but I thought it was a decent turtle film. Uh, what did we get after that? That was 2007, right? So... Yeah, after that, we didn't get another version of the Turtles into, until, like, uh, 2012, which uh, took me a while to get into, because I remember when they released a trailer for that, for the 2012 series, and I thought, oh, man, I don't know if I could get into this brand new d design of the Ninja Turtles. They don't really look quite right to me, but I think it was, like, two or three months later, I sat down one day and started watching the 2012 series, and I became a instant fan <laughs> to the point where I just kept up with all of the uh, remaining episodes that came out after that and I even got into collecting um, Ninja Turtles again with the 2012 series and I had a lot of fun definitely had a lot of fun with the 2012 series and cannot wait until they release a uh, ultimate blu-ray collection set so I could have all of the DVDs or uh, blu-rays in just one box uh, so you know, I'm definitely giving this new show a chance, just like I did, just like I gave every other version of the Ninja Turtles a chance, and it's, uh, it's been different so far. Um, I really don't know how I feel about it, it's just, I mean, I, I understand they are trying to bring in a brand new audience, and that's fine, so I'm gonna keep watching this show, and hopefully... Hopefully I'll have a uh, a better <laughs> a better analysis of where I uh, stand on this whole rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show. Uh, all right, so this is Omega Team and T channel, and um, hopefully I I will see you guys in a few more months when the toys are finally out. Hopefully they're out sooner for you guys to buy. I don't know if I will buy them, but hey, if you guys see them in the store, pick them up. Pick them up and collect them because remember what happened with the 2012 series when they were ending that show, the turtles were gone from the stores forever <laughs> and they're becoming incredibly hard to find unless you, you know, you go online, of course. Uh, all right, this is Omega Team and T channel and uh, I will see you guys later. Stay awesome. Cowbunga.